Before we can program our first Java program, we have to download the standard development kit for Java. So the first thing you should do is just open up uh, whatever browser you'd like. And we're going to look for the Java SDK. That should be the first thing that comes up. We're going to be downloading the standard development kit 8. Go down to where it says Java SE Development Kit 8U20. Um, click Accept License Agreement. There are actually two options for downloading for Windows. Now, if you're on a Mac, clearly you'll just want to download the Mac OS X uh, disk image. But if you're on a Windows, there is the x86 installation and there is the x64 installation. Um, so x86 is just Microsoft's way of saying 32-bit. If you want to check to see what kind of system you have, um, if you're in Windows 8, go to the Start menu, just start typing. You can type System. And then if you click on Settings, go to System. Here, you should see System Type. So here I see that I'm running a 64-bit operating system, x64-based processor. Um, you should see something similar. If you're on Windows 7 or something earlier, simply go, um, you can click the Start button, go to the search bar, and type in system and you should see a menu that looks very similar. Um, once again, if you're on OS X, this isn't really a concern. So I'm going to download the 64-bit, but yours might be different. So that's what we're going to click. We're going to click the X64 download. And the next thing we want to do is download the IntelliJ uh, IDE. So if we go here to IntelliJ IDE, we can download. We want to download the Community Edition. Um, so, we'll wait for that to download. So let's go through the SDK installation process after we're done the download. So we can click Next, Next. So it'll prompt you and ask you about your destination folder for your Java setup. Just um, This is pretty typical, so um, in program files in a subfolder called Java, it's going to install this. Um, just make note of what folder this is. Make note of this directory. It's going to be very important later. So once that's done, you can start installing the IntelliJ IDE. Next, next. Uh, creating a desktop shortcut would be fine. That's a fine folder. Okay. And it's going to start installing. Let's go ahead and run IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. So the initial startup might actually take a minute. Um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So usually on the first startup it's going to take a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do when we see this menu is create new project. So we're going to create for our first Java project. So make sure Java is selected here. Go down to where it says Project SDK. Um, you might have something there, and if you don't, that's fine. Uh, just go to New and click JDK. And then navigate to wherever your Java was saved. So for example, this is our latest download. So go to JDK 1.80 underscore 20. That should be what you have. Click OK and that should do it. So then go to next. We don't need to create a project from template. So we're going to call this project uh, my first projects. So before you do anything else, go to view, tool windows, and projects. So you should have a menu that opens up like this. 
so you should have and then you should have some folders so if you click this uh, if you click this arrow next to it you have the dot idea folder and this merely tells this merely indicates that the project is part of the uh, IntelliJ IDE we're going to be putting all of our programs in our SRC folder so first thing we want to do is right click SRC go to new and then go to Java class we're going to call this hello world hello underscore world click OK okay and right now we should just get something that looks very plain like this um, just to test everything out let's go ahead and just create a project so let's put in a main method public static void main passing a parameter string args uh, we'll put a curly brace underneath so make note of the structure so these are curly braces so that would be um, curly braces are you know uh, to the right of the P on a keyboard like that so they're ones that open to the right and ones that open to the left and they correspond so basically um, classes are a bit weird and we'll get to those very soon but for now just know that the class hello world everything that's inside the class hello world is going to be in between these curly braces so right now all we have is this main method this public static void main um, and the main method has their own set of curly braces so we're gonna put some com uh, we're gonna put some commands in here and let's make it do things so we're gonna say system dot out dot print lm and then inside parenthes inside some parentheses we're gonna have some quotation marks inside the quotation marks say hello world and then at the end of the line make sure you put a semicolon that's very important in Java so once you have something that looks like this simply right click go to compile hello world dot Java this will convert our Java code into Java bytecode And then you should see a message on the bottom that says something like compilation completed successfully. And right click, go to run hello world. And if everything works, you should see some output on the console here. So if you see if you see output here, that's great. That means that the Java development kit has been successfully installed. It means that everything's working properly. Um, and that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and customize IntelliJ a little bit. So I'd like you to go to File and Settings. Go to Appearance under IDE Settings. And where it says Theme, change the theme from IntelliJ to Darkula. Um, this is, you'll see very quickly like what this does. So after you click Apply, you'll see Restart is required. Um, you can either restart now or postpone it. It will make a difference. Click OK. So now we have a, in my opinion, a much nicer looking editor uh, appearance. So some people really like. So let's, if you run this again, you'll see that the uh, the console even changes to white text. Uh, some people prefer having the white background and the darker text. Um, I personally prefer having a darker background and you know lighter text. I kind of. Um, you're free to change this to whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. I prefer the darker background, but that's up to you.